All right, we're going. We're going to play some music now. Off to Nashville. We are. Fafa Pico is in the door with Jacob Schaffelberg. I like saying that, Jacob. Jacob Schaffelberg. Uh, Joey Skinner, a GA signing. Lawrence White from uh, a free signing. Tyler Freeman on a free signing. Nick Dupuy on a trade. Ben Martino, a homegrown player. Um, Nebu Perry on a free. And Kemi Amiche on waivers. Robert Castellanos is out. Uh, Donaciano is out. Eric Miller is gone. Dave Romney's gone. Ake Loba is gone. Handwala Buana is gone. For me, what they need, um, they need more Alex Moyle at right back. They need more Red Bull players. <laughs> they need, no, I'm just kidding. Um, they need right back depth. They, um, they, they're a little thin there uh, with Shaq Moore being the only real option. Um, they need about nine to 10 more left wingers. Because they haven't yeah, signed I don't think enough they have this offseason. Yeah, they really haven't. Um, yeah, Shaq Moore is really the only option there. You can flex Dan Lovitz over there if you want, but you're going to get right back. Um, you're going to have to figure out a way to use these left wingers. I think Nashville 2 is going to be <laughs> stacked because <laughs> a lot of these guys are going to go down that way. Um, and you need, you need a TAM number 9. You don't have a DP slot, but you need a striker to back up CJ Sapong. Um, they are rumored to a right back from Colombia, Joaquin Gutierrez. Um, he's 21 years old. His transfer market value is like 500K. So uh, he, he comes from the team that's logo looks like the Pittsburgh Steelers, but blue. I think that's Quachipato, I believe is how you pronounce that. So, nice. Um, what do you think they need? What else do they need other than more Alex Mouille at, you know, every position? More Alex Mouille and more left wingers. I think that's that that checks all the boxes. <laughs> um, they need a striker, honestly. Like, I, I, I think Hani is obviously one of the best players in the league. And I know we grouped him in as a striker in our in our top five list, but he's kind of more of a secondary striker, more of like a playing a similar Giovinco type role. He's not an out and out number nine, I just feel like they need that. I mean, CJ Sapong has been good for them over the years, but this team needs like it's just a true lethal striker. And then I think this team would be one of the most dangerous teams in the league. Um, I agree on the right back depth. I think they need just somebody to back up Shaq more, but striker for me is the biggest hole. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Um, I've got them at a, a low B minus, a high C plus. Uh, they improved some really good areas, uh, specifically their left wing, their left wing two, their left wing three, uh, and their left wing four. All very, very good now. Um, they also added some really reliable uh, center back depth next to Jack Mayer, um, as well as a, a Philadelphia Academy goalkeeper. So we know that the Philadelphia Academy creates really good players. They picked this guy out as a homegrown and, and brought him over, which is really nice. But again, the big worry is that striker spot. Uh, CJ Sapong did drop off a little bit last season. Teal Bunbury is okay, not great. If Hani falls short, which I don't think he will, but if he does, who's next? Ake Loba is gone. Um, but they do still have that DP slot tied up because he's only on loan. They couldn't sell him. So that DP slot is still tied up in his contract. Um, so you need to go find a reliable MLS level number nine. Um Mr. Dom Dwyer paging Mr. Dom Dwyer. Somebody get him in yellow right now. He'd be perfect for them. Yeah, I did not love this window from them. I am thinking around like a, a low C, honestly. Um, I just don't really get it. They went and signed literally four left wingers in this window. It's just insane to me. I just don't understand it. Uh, obviously, like, I think some of these guys will be moved around. I don't think, obviously, they're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six left wingers on the team. I'm sure some people will play right wing. Some people will probably be moved around, maybe as striker or as like a number 10. But I feel like the signings were kind of hit or miss. I mean, they 
they signed someone from USL two, which is like the fourth tier of the U S to bring to their first team, which I don't really get that one. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't think other than Fafa Pico, I don't really think they brought in too much that's going and, and Nick Dupuy. Um, I don't think they brought in too much that's going to influence the team a ton or take them to the next level. So I'm thinking like a C for them. Okay. Let us uh, let us move on a little bit. Let's go. Let's go say hello to Jimmy Conrad. And the Wizards. That's right. We're going all the way back. MLS 96, baby. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this one. This wasn't in the notes. <laughs> in the door is Jimmy Conrad. Out is who gives it. Um, Nemanja Radoja on a free transfer. Graham Zussi, Andrew Fontas, and Roger Espinoza all re-signed from free agency. Tim uh, Lebe- Label, excuse me, uh, on a free transfer. And Danny Flores on waivers. Uh, the only real big names out, Nicholas Ismayat Marine and Uri Rossell. Talk to me about what you think they need. I've got a pretty good one for this. All right, start us off then. No, I want you to go first. Okay, I think they need a goal- goalkeeper. Um, Tim Melia is definitely aging out. Um, he was not great last season. And I don't feel super confident in pulse camp being the next man up. He still has obviously some time to develop. He's 21. Uh, and maybe this is the season where he gets that chance, but I kind of wish that there was maybe someone else to, to compete there. Um, center back could definitely use some more depth as well. They really only have three on the roster right now. Um, Yeah, the rest seems not too bad. Maybe some more winger depth. If you're going to play with wings, it's really just Shallowy and Johnny Russell and then uh, Sioni. I definitely butchered that, but. um, Yeah, so so they are rumored to Norbert Diomber, uh, a center back, and Gustavo Amato, a striker. The Gustavo Amato I don't know much about because... He does not have a picture on transfer market. His market value is like 50K. Uh, I don't know if he's even real. But Norbert Giamber, uh, as a center back, would come in. Um, let me just pull up some information on him really quick. I agree they need a little bit of that. The biggest thing they need are three healthy designated players. Kinda There's and Polito right coming now. back. Um, Kinda oh, oh, and, they, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Kinda and Polito coming back are going to be massive for this team. Uh, it was quite clear how badly they missed both of them last year. Uh, and if they come back at 75% of what they were with Agata and Tommy behind, you know, now in the team, this team's going to be great. Uh, Norbert Giamber, by the way, a Slovenian, sorry, Slovakian center back from U.S. Solentar, Solernitana. It's the, it's the newly promoted Serie A side. Um, he has my computer decided to work. Oh, U.S. Salernitana is rumored to take Michael Keane from Everton. Please. <laughs> That's off topic. Let's stay on topic here. <laughs> We've been going for like, I feel like two hours already. No, it's only been an hour and a half, maybe. Um, he's got 28, peri- <laughs> 28 appearances for the Slovakian national team. Um, he's bounced all over Italy, um, but was with Roma for a little bit. Um, Perugia, Bari. I mean, he's been kind of all over Italy for a long time. Um, comes with some pretty good experience in the way of um, the Serie A, as well as some international tournaments, such as... Nope, no international tournaments. I lied. Just Italy and the Italian Cup. Um, but he has made basically every appearance for uh, Salertana for the last three years between Serie A and Serie B. So clearly has the experience to do well there and would slide in, my guess, to a starting spot in um, Kansas City. To me, 
uh, this grade. I, I don't think they needed to do a ton. I'm giving them a C plus. Um, anyone who they couldn't bring back, they had to replace. You know, Radoja for Uri Rossell does that. Uh, if they can get Guillaume in for Ismiat Marine, they can do that as well. But the big thing for this team is going to be Kinda and Polito um, coming back. This team is not going to be anywhere near what the 2022 team was, and I think they'll be just fine coming into 2023. I'm going to give them a C. Um, I, this team just feels like it refuses to move on from players from their past like i just i don't don't really get it they had three guys who were very much aging and were up for their contracts expired this year and they brought all of them back so we have you know 36 year old zussi's back 36 year old roger espinosa's back 33 year old fontas is back they still have 36 year old tim melia i i don't know it just doesn't seem like this team is willing to move on and, and give more game time to their younger players, um, which confuses me. I don't really understand that one. I I definitely understand like having a good mix. It should you should have some like older veteran players to kind of be leaders on this team, but they just bring back everybody. Um, and I I don't think they've really improved the team too much in the off season. But I don't think they got worse either. So I kind of see them at like a C. Nice. Um let's go let's go to the team with a golden boot winner. Or maybe a future golden boot winner, depends on how you look at it. Ooh. Is it Chicago? It is Chicago. <laughs> um in the door for Chicago is Marin Haley Selassie on loan, Arnaud Sequet from Montpellier, Jeff Gall, uh, and Jonathan Dean. Out the door, Gaga Slanina, John Duran, Ivanov, Espinoza, uh, Sekulich, and Bornstein all out the door. To me, I need to see some goalkeeper depth. Uh, I very much am excited to see Chris Brady because I believe this is his goal. Um, but if he gets hurt, you've only got Spencer Ritchie on the back. I would, I would like to see one more there. I'd like to see a starting level right back. Um, I don't see, I don't see really too much of a way to get that right now with Justin Reynolds. Uh, you need a Tam level attacking midfielder. Um, Shakiri is, is okay, but I think if you could get a Tam level, um, attacking midfielder, you can flex him out to the left wing. Uh, Jairo Torres on the right and go from there. Uh, and then they need a designated player number nine. Uh, you've got Casper Shabilko, which is a good TAM level, uh, and then two young players there. Uh, they are rumored to Huang Weijo, a striker for Olympiacos, who is a very, very active player for the South Korean national team. Did not go to the World Cup. Um, but he's got 16 goals and 53 international appearances for them. Um, he transferred to Nottingham Forest, went on loan to Olympiacos, uh, only has five appearances so far, but uh, he played for Bordeaux from 19 to 22 uh, and had 29 goals and 94 appearances. So uh, that is one of the rumors they have there. That would be the DP number nine I'm looking for. What else do you think? I... Man, I, I don't like the way this team is shaped up right now. Um, Hater. I think... So they, they've brought in a couple of right-backs in the offseason. I think they're going to try to... They're, they're going to fill in that right-back spot. Uh, Left-back... I feel like they could probably get some more left-back depth. All they have right now is Miguel Navarro. Um, and midfield depth. I see Gaston Jimenez. I see Federico Navarro, who I think are fantastic for the midfield. But that's about it. Then it's a bunch of 17, 18, 19-year-olds. So I see definitely need some more midfield players, need some more left back. I really like the center back situation. Goalkeeper, I'm, 
I would say I'm in agreement. I think you give Chris Brady the goal just as you did Gaga. But yeah, I'll leave that for now. And then if we want to jump into grades, I can keep going. Yeah, go ahead. Give me your grade. Let me hear what you got. I am not a fan of this window for them. I think that it's great that they capitalized and uh, got really good money for their players. Jan, uh, Jan Duran, they got good money for. Gaga Slanina, they got really good money for. Uh, and obviously, Duran is a very recent one, so I'm not going to knock them too much for it. But they just have not spent that money at all. Slanina, you know, was sold a while back. Obviously, was just here, I think, on loan. And they just haven't reinvested the money. Obviously, like I, I'm not saying they need to have used it to get another goalkeeper because I like that they're going with Chris Brady here. But this team just doesn't feel great on paper and they have all this money and they just seem to not be reinvesting it. I mean, they brought in their biggest signing, it seems like, is from a, a mid-table French team. A 30 year old right back from mid table French team. So I just, I feel uninspired by their window. I feel like they haven't done enough to bolster the team. I think there are good players in their attack who can be, you know, uh, still keep them somewhat competitive in games with, you know, like Chris Mueller, Shakiri, Shabilko, Fabian Herbers. But I, I think they need some help in the midfield. They need help in defense and they just, haven't done enough for me in this window. So I've got their window at a D plus. You are a hater. You wouldn't give an F to Vancouver, but you're going to give a D plus to Chicago hater. Um, I am removing my, what they need at a uh, starting level right back. Cause I, I thought I had written down that Sequet was a left back, but he is not, he is a right back. So they have their starting right back, um, which is good. They still probably need a little bit of depth. I've got it at a C minus um, one playoff appearance in the last 10 years, an open designated player slot, like $40 million worth of transfer fee. And you've got crickets. Um, That's what I'm saying. It's so disappointing. I, I don't disagree, but you can't tell me that you're going to give a C minus to Vancouver who have been the same amount of disappointing as Chicago and then come out and, and bash Chicago like that. You don't get to do that to my boys in Chicago. Yeah, uh-uh. but Chicago ha- Chicago has the money. Vancouver hasn't sold anybody, and they're not sitting they on sell forty everybody. million. What do you spend. mean? But they're not sitting on forty million to spend. Anyways, um, I think they really need to push uh, for Huang Weijo. I think that's going to be tough. I know a lot of people want him, but um, I think they need to be the leaders in that in that group. Um, and they need to get a, a another Tam level attacker. Uh, go change this team around. Let's go. Everything's bigger in this state. <laughs> Must be Houston time. It is very good. Look at you knowing that. All right. In the door, our tour from Columbus, Andrew Tarbell in free agency, uh, Achara in the reentry draft, Brad Smith in free agency, Ivan Franco on loan, Franco Escobar in free agency, and Amine Bossi from Mets. Not the Mets, by the way, FC Mets. But let's go, Mets. Um, out the door, Zarek Valentin, Darwin Seren, San Junqua, Fafa Pico, Tim Parker, Darwin Quintero, Memo Rodriguez, Matias Vera, and Adam Lundqvist. Tell me what you think they need. Oh, sorry, before you do that, they are rumored to a 21-year-old left back from Utrecht named Javenico Vanderkust. So take for that what you will. Um... I think this team, man, I feel like we say this for every single team right now. Um, I think they need some left back depth right now. It looks like they only have Brad Smith uh, and they need another starting level center back. In my opinion, someone to partner up with teenage day Bay, um, who? who obviously, as we said, is a fantastic center back in this league or has been um, find him a partner, find him a long-term partner at center back and really solidify that defense for you. Uh, that's where I would like to see them build a bit more. Uh, although okay. I I say that, but I also let me just check. Uh, okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure they they didn't sign somebody that didn't pop up on transfer market. I disagree with you. I think that the partnership of Steras and Hadebe are fine. 
They need depth there for sure, but I don't think they need to find a starter. They need to find somebody with depth. Um, goalkeeper's okay. They need outside back depth. Um, Brad Smith being off injury and the only left back on roster. Worrisome, which is where Van de Kuss comes in. Uh, Dorsey or Escobar, I think, are fine. You can also play Escobar at center backs. That's great. Um, they need TAM level wingers. They lost Picot. They lost Quintero. They lost um, Memo Rodriguez. They, they lost a lot of players in that wide area. Um, and right now they got Beto Avila and Nelson Quinones. So I think getting one more right sided player, because right now they don't have a right wing listed here, I think would be helpful for them. Uh, at the TAM level, go out and get somebody who will make a difference. They did bring in Ivan Franco as well, just you know for the wing. Yeah, he's you're not right sided, right. but they did. Bring yeah, him he's left sided. You're right, but they like I said, depth anyway, right? Um, because Nelson Quinones and Beto Avila, I believe, if I remember, because I looked this before you, one is twenty, the other one's twenty two. But Beto Avila has been a Houston two player for basically his entire career. Nelson Quinones. Uh, just came over. He's on loan from Once Caldas and has one goal, one assist in 14 appearances in the second division of Colombia and zero goals, zero assists in 15 appearances in the first division of Colombia. So that's not really the level I'm looking at. Give me a grape. I've got the Matty. Say like a high B minus low B. I think it's another team that's what? I think it's another team that's moving in the right direction. Uh, I like a lot of the people that they brought in. Franco Escobar, I think, is a good signing. Um, I like the the, the deal to bring Artur in. Uh, Yvonne Franco as well, I think, is another good signing. They did lose a lot of people, which is kind of why I'm more favoring towards a B minus, uh, as they lost a lot of people who played a lot of minutes for them last season. But I still think this team is moving in a good direction. I think they have a strong midfield now with Cadesquia and Hector Herrera and Artur. They have a proven striker in Sebastian Ferreira. I think Ivan Franco is another good attacking option for them. Hadebe is a great starting piece in the back line. So I feel like you know there are a lot of pieces here that are moving in a good direction for Houston. I don't think that they're at the level where they're competing for championships and supporter shield, but. I think they're moving in a good direction towards trying to push for the playoffs. I've got them at a C plus. They lost a lot, uh, but it was necessary loss, right? You need to get cut ties with these guys that were on your team for the last four years and getting you bottom of the bottom of the group, right? So Escobar and Smith are good signings, but I need a little bit more depth there, like we mentioned with Smith's injury. Uh, Herrera, Carasquilla, and uh, Artur are all going to be okay in the midfield. Uh, but I want to see more investment into your wide spots and your number 10. Um, they're going to look more defensively sound this year, I think, but um, Franco Franco is good. Uh, Ivan Franco, but the, the, the level he played at when he was with um, Sebastian Ferreira that came from the same team. Um, he, he did okay. He had, he had some good contributions, but he wasn't like a world beater. Um, and, Amine Bassi at the number 10 spot uh, from Mets is good, not great. Again, he'll, it, 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 he is a 50-50 guy, I think, that will either immediately transfer and be very good, or he'll just never get going and they'll send him back in, in a year and a half, two years with little to show. So, a little bit of work yeah, still to I do think, in Houston. Yeah, I think I'm just a bit higher on their signings right now than than you are in the you know, let's Remember the there. last time somebody was high on all their signings? No, I, I don't. I'm sure you did. I don't remember. Um, champions. LAFC. Wrong. <laughs> Seattle Sounders. Uh, wrong champions. Huh? Wrong champions. Ha <laughs> I got you. Um, in the door to. Two homegrown players, Freddie Montero and Eber. Out the door, Will Bruin, Ocampo Chavez, Jimmy Madronda, Samuel Adenarayan. What they need, outside back depth, and a healthy Jao Paulo, and they will be fine. Um, 
you know, they're they're a little bit thin at the right back, left back spot. The um a little bit thin at the right back, left back spot. Yeah, knew who you got Alex rolled on, and that's it. So you might want to go a little bit deeper there. Um, and Joe Paulo coming back from injury is going to be massive for them, as well as Obed Vargas, by the way. Um, but we shall see. What do you think they need? Yeah, I think spot on. Uh, I don't think they needed to do much. They obviously uh, in the league, they underperformed last season, but this team's really good on paper still. They have tons of really good youth guys coming through and possibly getting some more minutes this season. Uh, and then a really good mix of, of like really proven players in this league as well. So I would agree, build a little bit more depth and left back, right back. And then I think you're ready to give it another go this season. Yeah. And I, I think they'll rebound totally fine. Um, I gave them a C plus. I don't think there's a ton that you could do with the roster restrictions they have, you know, no DP slots. Uh, they're kind of tied up with their U22s as well. So uh, going out and getting a bear is a great move, uh, much better as a backup striker than Will Bruin was. Uh, and with, CC- with CCL out of the way and Joe Paolo coming back uh, super healthy, this team's going to be fine. Uh, just some outside backs and you'll be fine. Yep. C plus is exactly what I was thinking too. Um, really, I don't think improved the team too much, but they also lost really nothing. So. I don't think that they are in any worse shape than they were last year. I think they just have to get healthy and things will click again. Yeah. And I think if you look at, you you mentioned before a team that was uh, in a win now type of mindset. I think this is Seattle's one of their last runs with the crew that they have. I mean, uh, Ladero at 30, uh, at 33, Stefan Fry at 36, Rui Diaz at 32. They're running a bit low on time with their uh, with their superstars, so this might be their last real push uh, before they have to do a rebuild. So let's uh, let's keep an eye on it. Yep. As we move, oh, just a bit south. Hmm. LAFC. Not that much south. Portland. Yeah. In the door is only two people. Uh, Evander. From uh, Michelin and Fogaccia, from uh, he was resigned. Out the door is Blake Bodley, uh, George Fuchive, and Juan Carlos Van Rankin. Tell me what oh, they are rumored to uh, a striker named Matija Brigon from Rajica. I know we all know of him, so <laughs> that's a household name. I have to yeah, say. Tell me what you think they need. I think that they. Could maybe, uh, I think they're okay there. I would say maybe if they're going to play with wingers, maybe a left winger. Uh, they could probably move guys around, but transfer market has four guys lifted as, listed as right wingers and nobody lifted, listed as at the left wing. Kind of surprised they're looking at another striker. I mean, does this team not have enough? I mean, if you guys go to Felipe Mora, Fogaccia, and now they're looking at another one. I mean, sure, to each their own. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would say maybe some depth at the number 10 spot. I'm kind of looking. I only see Sebastian Blanco there, who's obviously, you know, he's 34 at this point. It would be probably good for them to get somebody to at least step in and soak up some minutes so you could save Blanco's legs a bit more. But Like a Vonder? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's so that's he would the do the one, job that's the one bad thing about this this website is yeah this? it's not totally up to date yeah all right we'll scratch that one off i think they they covered that one pretty well then um yeah i guess i'll just say left winger then <laughs> well grace wants to grace wants to talk grace grace has some ideas yeah what, what do you think grace what do they need what do they need grace says they need to buy down a designated player that's right, Grace, they do. No, they could um, play with four. Other um, teams have done it. So right now they've got four. They've got Evander, who just came in. Um, they've got Sebastian Blanco. They've got Nia's Gota, and they've got Yimichara. So one of those guys either has to go or has to get bought down. 
Um, and as you mentioned, Sebastian Blanco at 34, I might, I think might be the guy, but we'll see. Um, other than that, I think they're great. I think the only thing that they really needed was a playmaking number 10. Uh, like I said, Blanco kind of was, kind of wasn't. And they really haven't had a good one since Valeri. So um, Evander, I think, has the potential to be a top si- top 10 signing of all time in MLS. I think he's going to be fantastic, uh, especially with the players around him. I'm very excited to see what he can do. I think the back line is strong. Midfield three is going to be good. Uh, and they've got, as you mentioned, a ton of attacking options. I've got this at an A-. minus. Pretty high up there. Yeah, because they didn't need to do much. They needed, they needed to get one thing, one massive thing, and they, they hit it out of the park. They didn't mess it up at all. I mean, they they could maybe improve a bit more at center back if you if you had to be nitpicky. See, you but they have in... four, and all four of them can start. They're all starting quality. Yeah, but they're not. I mean, you could you could improve upon them. I do. I agree with you, hundred percent. They're all starting quality, and this is this is just being super nitpicky. I think that they're totally fine. But if you really had to pick something, you, you could probably find maybe a better starting level center back but i agree with you i think evander was like the biggest hole that they needed to fill and i he i mean they knocked it out of the park with that one um i would say a minus as well I, it's obviously they didn't bring in a lot not that they needed to like you said but they the the position they needed to bring in they knocked it out of the park i will say maybe i'd sit on a b plus just because now they kind of put themselves in a situation where they have to figure out what they're going to do with their DP spots because they are stuck with four right now. That's totally fine. I'm sure I... they will, but still. Um, we have eight more teams to go. <laughs> oh, my God. We still have eight more? I know. We're, we're probably going to have to cut this into two episodes. But Oh, yeah. Um, this is not one episode. <laughs> no. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna move on here to Colorado. Um, in the door, Kevin Cabral, Calvin Harris. Uh, Moise Bombito, uh, Generation Adidas signing. Steven Betashore comes back in free agency. Cole Bassett has his loan terminated and recalled. Connor Ronan from Wolves and Andres Maxo from Bronby. Out the door is Philip Mayaka, their first round pick in 2018, maybe? Lucas Estevez, uh, loan expired, as did Felipe Gutierrez's. Clint Irwin, Giassi's artist, were both out of contract, didn't come back. What do you think they need? Sorry. They are rumored to an Australian left back, Alex Ger- Gersposh, uh, from France- France's second division. Again, a very good household name. Of course. Um, I was going to say that position exactly. Uh, I think they definitely could use a left back. Because right now, the strongest left back on roster, or I would say the one with the most value, is uh, Anthony Markanich. Who's valued at 100K? So definitely a position that's probably up in the air for them. And you know, if they get that signing across the line, I think that's good for them. Um, maybe goalkeeper. I think obviously you're not a Yarbar fan. I think he's fine, but he's 33 at this point. Um, and there's not really anybody to back him up unless you're gonna go with Abraham Rodriguez, which maybe they are, but um I thought maybe they would go a bit more experienced backup goalkeeper. That one's not, I don't know, that's not my favorite choice for them to improve. But yeah, I mean, I'd say left back. Probably yep. the biggest I, need. I also had left back there. Um, I, I think they got two very high potential left backs there. I believe Seb Anderson is the other one that you didn't mention. Um, both of which have massive potential. They're, they're more of an MLS next team uh, team player right now. Um. Oh no, Seb Anderson's on the right side, but um. Yeah, both both of those guys, Jackson Travis, uh, Markinich are are Colorado two guys, um, who have potential, but you would definitely want to have at least one more with a little bit of experience, uh, and then you're looking at uh striker depth. You've got Diego Rubio, great, and you got Darren Yappy, looks okay, and that's it. So you're going to want a little bit more depth there. Um, nobody that they brought in really fits that mold. Calvin Harris and, and Cabral are both wide players, so um, you won't see that too much. Um, and yeah, they actually need a starting quality goalkeeper because this guy Yarbrough ain't it, Chief. Well, you're just you're a Yarbrough hater, so 
Well, you're already biased. Numbers don't lie. So, um, really love the two new signings they brought in, uh, Connor Ronan and Maxo. Um, I think Maxo is going to be bigger than Ronan right now, uh, just because that center back they needed somebody to hold it down for good. I think him and Lala Abubakar are going to come together and be awesome. And also Moises Bombito has the, the potential to be very good at Colorado too for a few years. So, uh, but Connor Ronan is going to be a great addition with Jack Price and uh, uh, maybe Brian Acosta in there or Max or Cole Bassett coming back too is going to be big. Give me a grade. I was not a fan of this window. I'll be honest. I mean, I think uh, I do like the signings of Ronan and, and Max. So I think that they have a uh, good potential to do well in this league, but they were positions where I feel like the Colorado wasn't in a bad situation. Like a boob car and Keita isn't the worst center back pairing. Um, I definitely don't mind them bringing in Max. So I think that's good competition at the least, but bringing in Connor Ronan where they already have Max Bassett, Acosta, Jack Price, Ralph Preso. I, you know, I think he's good quality to bring in. I just don't know if it was really a position of need. And then, they also went and spent um, a million gam on Kevin Cabral. That's crazy. I mean, Galaxy are throwing a party that they just got a million gam for Kevin Cabral. I I don't understand that one. Um, and then, you know, it's great that they got Cole Bassett back, but then it's just, it's like Beta Shore, Calvin Harris, and Michael Edwards. I, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like... I'm just, I don't know. I, I think they needed to do more in more positions where they needed help. And I don't think that they did it. So, I mean, I, I have them at like a, a C. Before Ronan and Maxo were announced, I had them at a D plus. But the addition of those two players specifically uh, has me at now a C plus. Um, I think the Kevin Cabral trade is going to work out better than he did in LA. I just don't think LA was the right fit for him. I think he has more ability to be himself now. Uh, Jonathan Lewis is there as well uh, with Calvin Harris. So all these guys are going to get chances. Uh, One of them might be flexed over to the right-hand side. You know, you never know, but um, I think, I think Cabral is going to be okay. Um, The GA signing in Bombito is going to be good. Cole Bassett's going to be a massive, massive bump for this team. Uh, Connor Ronan is going to solidify things on both sides of the ball. And Maxo was the captain of Bronby for the last three years. So, uh, and they are very, very good. So um, excited. I got a, I got a C plus here. Let's move on a um, little bit. West of. West of Colorado. No, West of me. A oh, West of you. Uh, how's your Columbus? geography? Very good. Uh, in the door, Jimmy Madronda, Christian Ramirez, and a homegrown player. Out the door, Jaleel Anibata, Baba, excuse me, Eric Hurtado, Pedro Santos, DJ Seven, Marlon Harrison, uh, Perry Kitchen, and Artur. Uh, they are rumored to Kai Kamara. We all know who that is. If you don't, read an MLS history book. Uh, they will either need, in my opinion, a TAM level center attacking mid or left winger, depending on uh, which one, where you're going to play Lucas Elorion. He plays in both spots. So you need to, wherever you're going to play him, you need to get a TAM level player on the other spot of him. Um, there's no depth in either of those spots, so he can't play both of them. So you need to find somebody who can play that at a high level. Um and that's pretty much it for me. I think everything else is pretty solid. Um, I would say center back depth and somebody to back up Zellerion. Nice. And, and maybe a striker backup as well. Well, that's so what Kai Kamara is for. Oh, Kai Kamara is not on our PowerPoint, so I missed that. <laughs> Wait, he's not even on the MLS website. I just said he's rumored. Oh, do, you, do you listen to oh. me? 
Well, you know what? They brought in Christian Ramirez. I forgot they brought in Christian Ramirez. You don't no, listen to me ever. No, I don't. I was totally not listening. I was looking up the t- I was looking up listing of designated players. <laughs> anyway. Um I've got him at a C minus right now. I don't know how the Ramirez Cucho partnership will work or if it'll be a, a one and done type of thing. Um losing DEJ seven after a career year, still no replacement, not great. Um I'm excited to see Will Sands get the majority of reps at left back. And I think Aiden Morris uh, at the six with Nagby is going to be very, very fun to watch. Um, I just think they need some wide players to make the system work or change system, depending on what they want to do. So I got him at a C minus right now. Um, Still have some work to do. I would say. I'd say C plus. Um. I don't really think they got a two. Oh, hold on. I changed my mind. <laughs> the sneeze woke me up. Um, I'm going to say a C for them. I don't like some of the players that they lost. And I don't think they gained a ton, to be honest. I like that they brought in Christian Ramirez. I like that they brought in Jimmy Madronda. But they lost Artur. They lost DJ7 after a career year. We lost Pedro Santos. So I it's been kind of a wash what if anything, I would almost say that they lost more than they gained, but I'll still stick at a C. All righty. Let's uh let's go over to Tom Brady's favorite team. Tom Brady's Tom Brady has a favorite MLS team. Don't question. Is it people. San Jose? It's New England, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're ridiculous. I, uh, I don't know. I was trying to think out of the box. I'm, maybe it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've been talking too long. Um, Bobby Wood in the re-entry draft. Josh Bulma at a Generation Adidas signing. Uh, Latif Blessing in a trade. Dave Romney in a trade. Nacho Gil resigned. And two homegrowns. Uh, Emma Boateng is out. Clement Diop is out. Wilfred Captoum is out. Edward Kiza is out. Brad Knight and AJ De La Garza and Ismael Tajiri Shroudy all gone. Tell me what you think they need. Any rumors before I jump into that? Not that I have written down. Okay. Um, I would say some midfield depth I, I think they need. Uh, I see Polster, Maciel, and Noel Buck. But let me flip through the signings. Yeah, I would say more of like a 6-8 a type midfielder. Um, looks like it's just kind of Polster and Maciel. And then maybe maybe they give Noel Buck some more minutes this season. But uh, And then I would say right back depth because Brandon Bay is the only right back on the roster at the moment. I would say maybe full back depth in general because left back is a little thin as well, but mainly right back. Yeah, I've got right back depth as my number one. Uh, and my number two is some some system that fits uh, heel, Bo, Vrioni, and Barrero on the field at the same time. Um, those guys all have a lot of great attacking ability, but uh, Gustavo Bo and Vrioni are both um, single striker system players. Uh, Bo has played out wide a little bit, but Barrero's on that side now. Uh, you really don't have a left winger to fit that. It's just kind of a, a, a weird situation. So um, we need to see how that works out. Give me a give me a grade. I just realized I skipped over them on my spreadsheet. Um, I would say high C plus, low B minus for them. Ooh, I feel like I like some of the players that they brought in. I really like the signing of Dave Robney. I think it gives them a lot of options at the back. If they want to play three, they have really three really solid center backs now. Um, and I like the signing of uh, I like that they brought back Nacho Heel and uh, brought in Latif Blessing. Latif Blessing, I think, can be a great bench option for them, kind of play them all over the place. 
Uh, and I don't think that they lost anything too extreme where they're going to be like hurting too much. So I feel like they got a bit better. Um, I don't think they really changed the shape of the team too much in terms of like signing in someone huge, but that's why I feel like they're a good C plus B minus. Okay. I've got them at a B plus. I, I think the signing of Romney is fantastic. Uh, massive improvement to the back line, uh, which was a, a huge issue for them last year. Petrovic is going to have a massive year, which we know about. Uh, I like the outside backs. You might want to have a little bit of depth, but I think the outside backs are great. Polster is very, very good. Um, I like Blessing. Not sure how the shape changes. We talked about how you're probably going to need to look at having a shape change. Um, he's more of an 8'10 than a 6'8", so you might be leaving Polster exposed more often. It's, it's something to be seen, but I really like the roster build so far. Yeah, agreed. I got to pause this. Hold on. All righty. Let's move on then to champions. Lost my scarf. <gasps> what do you mean you lost your scarf? You just had it. I'm back. How did I, that I got happen? It. I got it. How did that happen? Just in a cut. Cut like that. Um, We're at champions. LAFC. LAFC. Zero designated player spots available. They brought back Ryan Hollingshead. Uh, to play in any one of his nine positions. Daniel Maldonado on loan. Stipe uh, Buyuk, uh, a Croatian from Hajduk Split. Um, Aaron Long in free agency. And Eldin Jakupovic from Everton. Because as you know, Everton makes the world takes. On their way out, Danny Trejo, Thomas Romero, Christian Teo, uh, Sebastian Ibiaga, Franco Escobar, Sebastian Mendez, Eddie Segura, Latif Blessing, and Gareth Bale. To me, they only need two things. They need to not sell Christian Aranjo. And they need to get Maxime Cropo healthy. Other than that, I think this team is pretty freaking good. Yeah, team's definitely pretty freaking good indeed. Um, I think they could maybe use a little bit more midfield depth. Right now, it looks like they've got Kellen Acosta, Illy Sanchez, Jose Puentes. And then I think they re-signed um, Chris Ostimo. Uh, maybe at the right back as well. I know Hollingshead most likely can play there. But if they don't want to play Hollingshead at right back, then it's Eric Duenas, an 18-year-old, and Julian Gaines, a 20-year-old. For a win-now team, I don't know if that's necessarily the direction they'd be looking to go. Don't forget Kellen Acosta. <laughs> That's a good point. Never mind. I take that back. <laughs> um, strangely enough, no actual rumors for LAFC unless I missed something. Um, I see them rumored to uh, Huang Weijo, the same guy that was rumored for mm -hmm. somebody else. I forget what team. Yeah, he's uh, he's rumored for that. He was rumored for. Um, Chicago, Chicago. Mm. Um, but they're rumored with everybody. Quato Apoco <laughs> is is also for some reason a rumored signing. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I bet I bet you they get him. Um, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I, I think they're a little bit thin at some spots, but um, they've got they've got the right players in the right spots, right? They've got. Vela, they've got Bowanga, they've got Aranjo, they've got Sefuentes, Sanchez, Acosta, Hollingshead, Palacios, Aaron Long, Jesus Murillo, uh, Cripo, or McCarthy. Um, listen, I don't know how they haven't broken transfer rules yet. I definitely expect a story to come out in three years. Like, wow, Chiellini and Bell both made like $7 million of under-the-table signings that nobody knew about. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, this team needs to hold on to Arango. If he wants a DP deal, actually, this is before Christian Teo went out the door. I said, if he wants a DP deal, send Teo out the door with a goodie bag, wishing the best. So Teo's out the door with a goodie bag. Get freaking Arango on a DP deal like yesterday. Um, he is the best pure striker since Yosef. The fact that they were even thinking about letting him walk away is insanity. Um, I think Long is going to be better at LAFC than he is at Red Bull because they're not asking him to play one-on-one -on -one defense for 90 minutes. 
Uh, so I think he'll be more successful there. They are a bit thin at center back. So um, because no shot, Chiellini is lasting 90 minutes in this league. So they need a little bit more help there. Buyek is good, but not a wrong how good. So um, only I give him a B, but they've got 900 other signings in the in the work. So I'm not. Yeah, I am also thinking. I'm uh, yeah, I would say a B. Um, I was thinking almost B plus, just because this team is already so insane on paper, and yet they still managed to get stronger by adding Aaron Long and getting a uh, Buke, who's probably got some pretty high potential. So they they seem to defy all roster rules and somehow keep getting their team stronger and and the fact that they have a designated player spot open which is even more crazy <laughs> which is why i don't believe it um i know it's crazy i don't know we'll find out in a couple of years that we will that we will um yeah you're looking at you're looking at a team that is doing mls the right way this is if this is all legal which i don't know if it is but if it is this is how you do it. let's let's Agreed. move on let's go uh Let's go east. Let's go back to the east coast. Charlotte, we are. Enzo Capetti, the big designated player signing in from Racing Club. Ashley Westwood in from Burnley. Hamidi Diop, a, a Generation Adidas signing, and Harrison Awful being re-signed. Out the door goes Daniel Rios, Jordi Alcivar, Alan Franco, and Christian Fuchs. What do you think they need? Talk to me. I'm looking. Man, they have a lot of players on roster. Yep. Um, maybe some midfield depth. I would say it looks like midfield wise they've got. Wait, let me check the, that they didn't add somebody in the midfield, and I look stupid now. Just Ashley Westwood. Okay. Um, maybe like one more player for the midfield. Uh, would Westwood coming in? They have. They've got Westwood, they've got Brent Bronico, and they've got Derek Jones. But I feel like you could probably use with getting one more guy there. Um, and then maybe left back. You've got Joseph Mora and Adam Armour. Um, I would actually say, let me check the list again. I would Scratch the left back one. I would say a center back. Get like one more center back to add to the depth chart. Uh, you've got Melanda and Carujo. But I think adding one more into the mix would definitely be pretty helpful. Yeah, I've got um, I've got two tan level center backs. Uh, I think Hamdi Diop is going to be good. I think he was very good at Clemson. Um, they've got the return of Sobachinski from uh, Poland. He was. Purchased, loaned, and then his loan just ended uh, a couple about a month ago. Um, so the, the 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 center backs are there, but with Guzman Carujo coming off of a uh, uh, a ligament issue, they need they need people who are proven uh, proven strong center backs. Um, Melanda is okay, but I would really like to see somebody with MLS experience. Um, I think Hamdi Diop might just be tossed right into the mix from the start if they're not rumored to anybody. Um, and I agree with you, center mid-depth would be helpful. Um, they are okay in the center mid. Um, interested to see how, how some of it plays out, but um, yeah, not not quite sold with them just yet. Give me a grade. I've actually really liked this window from them. Um, I would say, give me one sec. I'm just going to make sure I don't miss anybody major that left. I'd say a B for them. Or no, I'll, I'll say B minus. Um, I actually really like, no, I, I changed it back to B. Um, I, I really like the signing of Ashley Westwood. Um, I definitely know that there are like some big ifs there. I mean, he's 32. He's coming off a pretty significant injury, but when he was playing for Burnley in the Prem, he was playing pretty darn well for them. So I think if he can get back to that level with Charlotte, that'd be huge for them. And then obviously Enzo Capetti is a huge one. 
Um, that's a massive signing. That's the, these are the signings that we need to be making in this league, one hundred percent. So, um, I'm all aboard that signing. I think those two alone are, are great additions to the team. Um, still work to be done on this roster. I feel like, especially in the back line, but um, I don't remember if I said B or B minus, but I'm gonna switch it back to B minus if I said B. I'm gonna go back to B minus. Um, just because it, it seems like it's mainly just those two, and I think. There's still work to be done in the back line. Can't wait to make that TikTok and just go B, B minus, <laughs> B, B minus. Um, I've got him at a B uh, because of the Capetti signing. Um, really, really love that. You're right. That's the type of signing we need in this league. Uh, Argentinian striker in his prime. Um, very excited to see how he comes in and, and runs this league. Um, I like how they got rid of players from their first year that weren't ever going to work. You know, you see so many times that people come in and they're holding on to players because they were the first players they brought in the door and they need to hold on to them and, and this, that, FCC. and the other. <laughs> FCC, exactly, right? These these guys said, if you're not working for us, you're gone. We're not taking the time to figure out if you can do it or not. Um, So really like that. The team starting 11 is setting up for a playoff run, I believe, if they can stay healthy. Westwood's still a 50-50. I know you like him. Knee injuries at that age, you don't just bounce back from and everything's hunky-dory, right? Um, but I am excited to see how this team gets going with their new signings. Oh, this team went to Rome. Right. San Jose. DC United. You don't get that. Why did they go to the, why did they go to Rome? Oh, you haven't heard the story about when DC United went to Rome to see the Pope? No, I was just trying to set you up for the the Pope line. Uh, You've told me this like a million times already. Listen, I I assume you do not listen ever. So I it's about fifty fifty. <laughs> in the door for DC United, uh, in a massive overhaul for Wayne Rooney's side. Derek Williams uh, from LA, Pedro Santos in free agency, Tyler Miller in free agency, Mohamed Jahazi from Hammerby, uh, Alex Bono in free agency, Ruan in a trade with Orlando, and Matthias Click from Leeds. Out the door is Tony Alfaro to NYC, uh, Sofane Jafal from uh, to Austin, Sammy Guedry's gone, uh, Chris odiatsum has gone, Brad Smith is gone, Kimarni Smith is gone, Drew Skundrich, Bill Hamid, Ola Kamara, David Ochoa, and Rafael Romo. Goodness me, that's a lot of work. What do they need? They need time, baby. They need time to gel. I think they've got the pieces and they have everything that they will need to be successful. You just got to let the glue dry. What do you yeah, got? I'm I'm trying to work through this because obviously a lot of these signings don't pop up on transfer markets. So I'm trying to go back and forth and make sure that if I see a hole, it's actually a hole and not just mm-hmm. them missing somebody. Um, I'd say maybe an attacking playmaker, like a number ten type of role. I know they got Ravel Morrison right there, uh, there right now, but I feel like you could probably improve in that spot. Um, I'm not sold on Benteke yet either. I'll give it some more time, obviously, because it's been a very short sample size, but um, could see that one maybe not panning out. Yeah, for me, it's it's all about where certain players are going to play, right? Is Taxi Fontas going to be an attacking midfielder or a striker? Is Pedro Santos going to be playing on the wing or at left back? You know, those types of questions are important. Uh, is Ravel Morrison going to be an attacking midfielder, a number eight or a number six? He's played all three spots since he's been here. Um, and that's on Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney's got to figure that out. And, and I think he will. I think he's got the pieces he needs. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Rooney knocked this out of the park. DC's been very, very bad for a long time now. And he came in, cleared house, got the team that he wants with a mix of MLS experience, international pedigree, youth talent, all to be his team. Now he just needs to let them gel, play his football. They'll be okay. I'm giving it an A minus. Wow. Yep. You you which, and I are on completely which, different standards for this. Which one, but... hurts, by the way. Which hurts. I hate it. I hate seeing them be good. Like I said, you and I are on completely different ends on this one. I'm not convinced by this window. I don't really like it to be honest with you i think he's going extremely win now um for a team that just finished bottom of the east 
that's a really tough turnaround to do. And I don't think the guys he brought in are good enough to win right now. Like, and when I say win now, I mean like Derek Williams, he brought in 29. Pedro Santos, 34. Tyler Miller, 29. Uh, Click, 32. You know, Benteke is 32. So like this team is, you know, age-wise, there they're, are plenty of players that are in win now mode. And I just don't think like the list of players I just read off is good enough that they can win in this league. I I'm not a big fan of the Ruan trade. Um, I think he had a tough year last year. I'm not super high on click. Um, obviously he had great years at Leeds, but I think he wasn't really even much in the mix uh towards the end of his time with Leeds. I, I will say there are a couple of signings that I do really like. Um, Mahana G's at left back. I'm all on board that one. I think that's a fantastic one. And bringing in Tyler Miller, I think, is also fantastic. Um, not a big fan of them bringing in 34-year-old Pedro Santos, um, especially if they're going to play him at left back. And Derek Williams is okay. So I feel like, you know, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the window. Um, I'm glad that they are willing to back Rooney and give him the team that he wants. But I'm not so sure that this team is ready. Or I should say, I, I'm not sure about the direction the team is going. Okay, some history for you. 2013, DC United finished with 16 points in 34 games. Cleaned house, brought in new manager, brought in new players. They topped the East the next year. 2014, Montreal finished at the bottom of the East with 28 points. 2015, they're in third after they bring in the players that they need at 51. Chicago in 2016, 31 points. 2017, they're in third place with 55 points. DC United bottom of the league that year, 32 points. Brought in players, 51 points, fourth in the East in the 2018. Orlando, bottom of the East in 2019. Uh, sorry, second bottom with FCC. Fourth place in 2020. You don't make progress with teams by sitting on the players that you have. Win now in MLS is not a, a, a real phrase. Like there is no team that is either win now or not win now. Every team can be win now with a certain sign. One player can make you a win now team, which is why I'm all in on Wayne Rooney right now because I think he's got the players that he wants that he can teach that he knows can be successful and I think DC is going to be very good next year which sucks so I think the problem is that like a lot of your examples were from 2016 MLS and earlier which is just like it's a totally different league than what we have now I think it was there was more parity then than we have now where you could bring in some you could bring in a Sebastian Giovinco and he would completely change your team and take you from a 13th place East team to a fourth or fifth place East team. But okay. I think now with the teams that like Toronto, LAFC, Philly have, I don't think you can bring in like a Sebastian Giovinco into a DC situation and take this team from bottom of the East to a playoff team. Okay, please. Explain I think you to have me. to do more. Oh, go ahead. Please explain to me the transition from 2021 FCC on 20 points to 2022 FCC on 49 points, fifth place, and a playoff win. Is that is that too far in the past for you? or? But they were bringing in players that were like in their prime on the come up. DC's bringing in guys that are aging and or coming off of bad seasons. Not all of them, but like, again, 34-year-old Pedro Santos, 32-year-old Click. 34-year-old Ruan Pedro Santos off- is still one of the best attacking fullbacks in the league. Tyler Miller is the best backup and now will be the best starting goalkeeper for DC since like 2015, Bill Hamid. Um, Ruan at Orlando, a great right back option. Alex Bono can take Tyler Miller's spot if he wants. Derek Williams was fine at LA. Matthias Click is 32 and will still do the job that he needs to do. And Mohamed Jahazi has, is young and I mean, he played, I don't know much about Hammerby. I'm sorry, I don't watch a bunch of Swedish football. But um, All right, he's you're a great making me defend that. DC United, and I hate you for this. I don't know if this is a ploy, but 
your hatred <laughs> is invalid. I don't think it is. That's because you don't think ever. All That's right, we're going to, we're going to the ballpark. Fine. Tony Alfaro in the door for New York City. Um, Matthias Pellegrini comes back on waivers. Mitaja Ilinich, um, a, a Serbian international, maybe. Uh, Gabe Segal on waivers. He was in Germany uh, after college and came back. Justin Hack resigned, and uh, Matt Fries for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Gam out the door. Anton Tinnerholm, Gideon Zelalam, Alexander Kyan, Sean Johnson, Santi Rodriguez, Nico Acevedo, Max Morales, and a bear. Talk to me about what they need and don't be dumb about it. Everything. Oh, good. On the same page. Yeah, they need a lot of help. Um, they don't. I mean, they they can play guys at striker, but they don't really have an out and out number nine. Um, honestly, they can use guys in the midfield. They really have Morales, Parks, and Justin Hack as a backup, and that's about it. In the defense, they lost their top center back. Um, I still think they have a good pair at center back, but they could use depth there. Could probably use... No, they definitely need full back depth, and they need a starting goalkeeper. So I feel like I touched on almost every area of the field, to be honest with you. Yeah, they are... Um... Oh, you, well, you know what? Actually, I take back the right back one. I forgot they signed um, Ilinich. I just, I don't think that is an Anton Tanner home replacement. I'm sorry. I agree. They signed him, but it doesn't mean he's going to be great. Um, they've got a good starting 11, okay? Um, right. Whoever, whether it be Matt Fries, whether it be um, Luis Barraza, their goalkeeper situation will be okay. It won't be Sean Johnson, but it will be okay. The center backs of, oh, excuse me. Maxime Cheneau and Tiago Martins will be fine. The right back of Tavon Gray will be okay. Um, I'm still not sold on him, by the way, but that's okay. Then your left back, Mate Almondson, showed that he was more than capable last year. Uh, your midfielders, you're looking at Keaton Parks, Alfredo Morales with... Um, Maybe 14-year-old Maximo Carrizo. I heard he I heard he got into a preseason game the other day. Hmm. Um, but no, Justin Hack will probably jump into that role. Um then you got Tiago Andrade on one side, Gabi Pereira on the other, with Tyus Mago Magno or Matthias Pellegrini playing as a as a false nine. I mean, the starting eleven is there, but they're not deep anywhere. You get one injury and it's over. Um Yeah, that's that's what it is. You just need to get get deep. Um, like I said, if if your center back three is the starting center back for the worst back line in the league last year, your left back depth is a bunch of teenagers and a middle schooler. You don't have a right back depth. One of your four center mids is in middle school. Um, there's no true number nine and a billion left wings. There's just not a lot of time for them to work. They do have rumor to another left back named uh, Brian Kufre uh, from Mallorca. So that might flex somebody to a right back role, but um, clearly they're not super happy with Mate Almondson. Um, my grade, it's a D. Um, just everything that I said, I don't need to explain that. that all of that right there is a D. I feel like you're being too kind to them, honestly. Um, I think it's an F. I mean, come on. It's got every bit. They lost a bear, Maxi, Acevedo, Santi Rodriguez, Sean Johnson, Cayens, and Tinnerholm. And what did they replace it with? Tony Alfaro, Matt Fries, like, and, and Ilinich. Like that's, that's terrible. It's been an awful window for them. Um, obviously the window is not over and they could bring more players in and I'm sure Man City can send them the entire U23 Man City team to fill the void. But I mean, like you said, starting 11 is still strong, but the minute one guy goes down, you're going to have massive holes in your team. I mean, they, they lost so many guys that were starter, a good starter quality for them and they did not replace them. 
No disagreements there. Um, let's move. Let's move to our last team. Let's finish this up. Who is it? I don't even know who's left. Who is it? San Jose. It is. It's San Jose. Um, in the door, they re-signed Judson. They've got two homegrowns. They brought in Michael Baldizimo from the re-entry draft. Uh, they brought they re-signed Tommy Thompson, and they got Daniel, the goalkeeper from Internacional. Uh, out the door is backup goalkeeper Matt Persano, Gilbert Fuentes, Jan Gregus, Saeed Haji, Eric Remedy, and Shea Salinas. Tell me what they need. Well, are there any rumors first? Nope. I would say... They need somebody who can back up Jabo at up top. Right now, he's the only striker on the roster. Um, I wish they had. Well, let me check. Actually, make sure they didn't sign somebody. Okay, no, I think I'm good. I wish they had a better option at the number ten spot. Um, I guess you can go Jameer Montero there, um, which is not a bad shout. But if you're going to go Jameer Montero more up the field, then I feel like the midfield could be better. I'm not, I'm not saying that they don't have depth there. I think there is depth there, but I think it could be the starter level could be improved. Um, I feel like Jack, as much as we make fun of Jackson Ewell, um, I do think he is starter level. And I think Jameer Montero is, but I'm, I'm not a huge Jutson fan. And I don't know if Michael Baldissimo is starter level. I want to throw it back to uh, 2019 when we were drafting our top five people. And yeah, you picked I remember Jutsen. I said Jutsen. I want to, I want to yeah. just make sure that everybody remembers. Listen, him. I was young. I didn't understand. <laughs> All I saw was he made a lot of tackles, and I was like, oh, he must be good. <laughs> um, They need a center back. Um, You know, I, I like – where would my – no, let's go. There it is. Uh, I like Nathan, of course. Rodriguez is – um, also a, a decent option. He can play right back, which might end up happening. Um, Tanner Beeson is okay. He hasn't been as great as I thought he would be. Oscar uh, Agron looks like he's got potential, uh, just not there yet. They need a DP number 10. I agree with you in your playmaker. Um, you've got the DP slot. You have to spend it on number 10. Um, and you need some striker depth. Uh, you can flex over Benji Kakanovic. You can flex over Cade Cowell to play in that role. Um, but Benji's probably out the door and Cade Cowell is probably right behind. So um, this team equally angers me just as much as Vancouver does. Your bottom of the West for like, what, the third time in four years? You're third to worst in the league on points in the league. You've got holes in every position that you're looking at. Because players are leaving, you're selling them, whatever. And your offseason is re-signing Judson and Thompson, getting a good goalkeeper, and Baldissimo with an open DP slot? San Jose, San, Jose, San Jose owners are a nightmare. They need to go. They need to sell it to somebody who cares. Um, the team deserves so much better. Uh, this grade is a D-. Damn. Um. I agree. I think this has been a very underwhelming transfer window for them because they have good pieces to be a good team. They have guys to build around. You know, Cade Cowell is one of the most promising young players in the in the entire league. You know, Christian Espinosa, who's a fantastic player. Jeremy Abovis is coming off for like a career year. Jameer Montero has proven. Jackson Ewell, as much as we'd like to make fun of him, again, a good starter central midfielder for them. Nathan's been a fantastic center back. You have like good pieces here, just build correctly around them, and they just don't. The only no, thing that, like saves... I said, there's no rumors either. That's the worst part. You asked if there were rumors for it. It's empty. There's nothing even in the rumor. the The only thing that saves this grade for me for them is the signing of Daniel. Yeah, um, I think that's genuinely one of the best signings of the window. I mean, he is. He was playing on one of the top teams in Brazil and kept 10 clean sheets in back-to-back -back seasons for them. I think that is fantastic. It's an area where they needed to improve because Marcin has not been good enough. Um, 
But outside of that, they did nothing for a team that was not good enough. So I will say D+. plus. That's all of our teams. Let's finish this up with your top three off seasons, top three teams based off of their off season moves so far. So I don't remember what grades I gave the entire time. So I don't know if this will match up with the grades that I gave. This is why um, you take notes before we record. Well, I have my notes here. I just don't know what I said, but I will say my top three from three are, to one. Oh, from th- you got it. You're making me rank them. Yes. I don't have a ranking for the top three. This is what I have to deal with, people. I yeah, I, I don't have a ranking for the top three, but my top three windows are Austin, Miami, and Toronto. And third, I've got Portland. Um, like I said, they only need to do one thing, and they got it right. Second, I've got Austin, probably for the same reason as you. And in first, I've already shown it. I love DC United's window. I've got them at number one. Give me your bottom three. My bottom three are, I again, I don't have them in a ranking, but my bottom three are San Jose, NYC, and Chicago. I've got New York City in third. I got San Jose in second. And the absolute worst offseason so far, with a month to go before the season, the Vancouver Whitecaps embarrassing do better vancouver okay we're done i think we're finally done thank goodness thanks <laughs> thanks <laughs> thanks so much everybody for listening uh to both of these episodes because we'll get cut up into two um we appreciate you guys uh, make sure you give it a like follow subscribe uh, all that good stuff make sure you're following us on social media so you see whenever we post clips and you can interact with us um facebook twitter instagram youtube tiktok uh, make sure you are following us wherever you get your podcasts. You know, when we post our next episode uh, and make sure you are following along because after we go through these, we're going into not so deep dives, every team, every conference, every player, it's going to be deep. Maybe not that deep, but it's going to be deep. Um, but again, thanks so much for listening and we'll see you on the next episode of the designated players podcast. See ya.